tested today brand new Samaki boom baits I was waiting for these guys for quite a while to come into the shops I know the guys up there it's a local guy on the Central Coast that makes these um, this is the bigger one this is the Samaki 60 mil spider prawn now if I get one out you can just see there's cool little packets they come in to keep them all nice and straight you have a look at that cool little prawn with those little feelers there now we're just coming along the edge here where we've been fishing. We just got a good fish. And what do you know? Right where I thought there might be one, we have found one. And this is what we're going for. Check this out. Here's the little legs on them. Those long feelers at the front. Little vibrating tail there, look at that. You see that? And that's what we're using. That's what we're trying to mimic. This is what those big brim and the estuary perch and the flathead are sitting up in these shallows trying to get. It's the new moon at the moment. So it's the dark moon. It's when the prawns are running. That's what we want to get. So I'll let him go. He can go be something else's food. But yeah, that's what we're using here. You can see these cool little UV eyes. This bloodworm color is also a really good one. In the dirty water today, I'm going with the motor oil. But those UV, they stand right out and so does this whole the whole body in clear water this is the go you pick up yabbies flathead anything on that but um that's what we're just trying to show you what we're looking for we're looking for prawns we know the prawns will be moving now and that's what we're trying to replicate you always want to match the hatch whatever's in the water the fish are feeding on that's what we want but they go back into these packets really well a little cut out here so you know exactly which way you're putting it in and back in the packet for next time Good thing about, uh, one of the things I'm warning about these, it says on the packet, but this sort of plastic, never put this in with any other soft plastics you might have. The colours will leach, but they'll also all um, melt into one thing and all the legs fall off them and that. They're great if you keep them in their packets. Don't be tempted to just leave them in a tackle box uh, or out in the sun or in the hot car and don't um, put them in with other plastics. They definitely will not be the same when you get them back out the next day. All right, let's see if we can get a couple more.
Ja. Just been heating up. Just been heating up some little um, boat holes and stuff. Real tough day here today. It's the water. We've had heaps of rain, so there's heaps of fresh air in the salt. Um, it's normally a pretty productive place, but at the moment, out here trying to test these new Samaki boom bait spider prawns. Uh, we've been getting a few. Nothing massive. I think the biggest I think I got was about 38. Um, but just getting a, a lot of these little guys on it, which is still fun. When you, whenever you're luring, if you're getting a fish, you're doing all right. But the water is, is it's like chocolate milk or coffee. It's putrid at the moment. So, just trying to get him back out there. I've gone, we're really having to hit up tight in the structure. So, I've actually gone with the worm rigging. Hey, little guy, I'll throw him back. Have a look at him, but we'll let him go. Mum and dad the big ones. I'm using a worm hook, which is uh, sort of semi-weedless. And uh, that's the great thing about these boom baits. They're, they're really, really stretchy. And what I've done, as you can see there, I've tied a sinker in a loop knot at the front. And then what we're doing here, by putting it like that, as I'm going in, I'm really casting tight into the structure in the shade. Uh, it's a bit hot out here. You can see there's still plenty, plenty for the fish when it bites down to squish up on it. But when I pull it up like that as I'm casting it in, it's sort of smooth. It goes through all the branches and you don't pick up as many leaves and little sticks. You will get the occasional one, but definitely a way to go when you're casting in really tight. It's a natural structure, lots of um, timber and rock, weeds, reeds, grasses, really good. Let's see if we can get a couple more. GoPro, I don't think it's going to work. Absolutely. Fogged over. Yeah. I'm just looking down. I'm trying to point to it now. It's going to fall. It did rain a bit last night, so I'm hoping sometimes they come out and just sit just to the mouth of the drain. It is a bit shady there, but you need to get your cast right up in there. It's one of the good things about being weedless, just falls back out of the branch if you do have a miscast with the wind. So just try and get in as close as possible, just work it slowly, pull back on it. But um, the good thing about using graphite, yep, there, see the tap in the line? There we are, yep, got him. Oh, there's a good fish too. So, oh, this is a really good fish. So what we're gonna do here, I'll just back the drag off a bit, I've got him out a little bit. But um, the old boom baits, this UV motor oil colour, just worm hooked. He's a good fish too, actually. He looks like he might be mid to high 30s, I'm guessing. From what I can see in this dirty water. But um, I don't know if the camera would have picked up that tick in the line, but yeah, he's a good fish. There we go. I might just try and let the boat just cruise over to the shade here so we don't have to be too hot and get a good look at it the way this worm hooks. I just gave him that extra second. You can see the tick in the line. I didn't strike. Just let him swallow it down just like a bait. It's just like a little live bait. But you can see how the worm hooks. Just giving him that extra second rather than pulling it up and jagging him in the eye or the side of the face or just letting him take it. They swallow it down. And um, when you do strike, look at that for a hookup. It's just like a little hook, like a normal bait hook, right in the corner of the jaw, and they come out re really, really easily. So you can see that. Anyone lure fishing, yeah, out and having fun. I don't keep them to eat them unless I need to. Just today, just catch and release in the brim. That's a decent brim. It's pretty fat. It's been feeding, I'm guessing it's the new moon, been feeding up on some prawns. 
and that's why I couldn't resist this little boom bait. What I might do is put the fish back in the water. I'll give him a quick measure just so we know. There we are. It's most probably a little bit smaller than I thought he was. He's just on to the tip, 31 centimeters. He's all right. Good fun, little brim, little porker around the edge. Good fun in the structure. We'll let him go. time could be just me but I seem to think it makes a difference just use scent I love there's a few different scents we'll do a whole video on different scents I like to use I love my dizzy scent today they seem to be hitting this prawn one I just put it in the little body cavity there's a little body cavity under on these Z-man uh, these not Z-man Samakis put a bit over it this is shrimp scent I, I, I'm not afraid to cover it especially today in that dirty water and what I find fish use their main sense is smell and vibration and it's sights there as well. Uh, most animals in stress let off a pheromone for everyone get out of here. I think brim do the same. So I definitely, after catching every brim I catch or a flathead, put some more scent on before it goes out. I don't want it to actually be, um, if they do put out that pheromone, a stress pheromone, I don't want it to go back in there. Generally I find by reapplying a scent after a fish, I can hook up straight away again next cast. Today is um, obviously catch fish, but uh, we're looking at doing a series soon. I've been fishing for a few years, um, quite heavily into it, not quite as heavily into it as Kane is. So, a part of what we're doing is there we are, riding where I wanted. Kane's going to. Um, get my fishing up to scratch. I went a little uh, wilderness, a uh, dive with wilderness, little trout rod here, one to three, one to four kilo, one to three kilo. Yeah, one to three, I think. Good little rods, those, packed right up, um, three piece rods. Come with a little hard tube that you can strap to your backpack or throw over your shoulder for those quick missions. But uh, I've taken on quite a few hikes. I've got one the same. I've got the next model up, uh, the two to two to six pound. I think it is one to one to three kilo as well. It's just a bit longer that one. Yeah, it's a six foot rod this one. Dave's trying a different colour. I've been using the motor oil, but always like to change it up. If there's two people fishing, always try two different lures until you crack the pattern of what colour they want. Dave's got a little avocado pearl on there. 
uh, nice little green top and the belly's a nice pearl colour. Um, the new Samaki Boombait range, they've got some really cool colours. They've got the ones that everyone likes and knows and uses, but they've got some other ones that you just don't see, uh, especially on soft plastic. Some of the colours they've got on this range are, are really, really good. I've been very impressed with all of them. As I said, I've only had them the last week. Um, they've only just come out just on the shelves in Australia. And um, yeah, I've been itching to get out and give them a good swim. <laughs>